So many of you guys bitching. Oh no, I took the red pill and now I can't watch my sitcom. Boo-hoo. Let's watch Ryan, a nice, easy, more digestible one than you're used to. Typical. This is actually something that comes up fairly common. A lot of guys take the red pill. They start reading Roll to Massey, Robert Glover, all these things. They start fixing their relationships, having better sex lives. And then they're like, I can't watch movies anymore because everything is just beta, pay beta male. And you're like, relax. Here's a nice authoritative answer for you. So this guy, Stonewall. Sorry guys, I don't know if this belongs in the Married Red Pill. I thought I'd post it here first. Uh, I've continued to read throughout the sidebar and all the posts in the Married Red Pill and Ask Married Red Pill. I realize I have a small problem. I can only read so much at a time and assimilate it. Typically means that a chapter or two from the sidebar in a sitting. So on the nights when everybody else has gone to bed, I'll stay up and read, maybe watch a little TV. But after a few chapters and a little introspection, I'm ready for something light. I really enjoy reading for relaxation but thanks to the red pill i'm seeing that a lot of stuff i used to enjoy is rife with blue pilled crap plot and characters and let's not discuss how horrible tv and movies have become so here's my problem very little entertainment today has good masculine characters as a sort of red pilled role model so here's my question what are you guys reading or watching aside from the sidebar for enjoyment are there any fictional book recommendations you have anything with a red pill theme any shows or movies I'm not looking for anything heavy, just something fun. The last things I remember reading that were more red pill were the Sackett series by Louis Louis Lamour. Thanks for any suggestions. Oh boy. Um, so there's two things. Jack has his, and I'll talk about mine after. Uh, Jack's was easy. Find ways to spend idle time that are essentially producing something and not just consuming something. Now, producing something will generally require some sort of focused brain activity, so if your goal is to relax before bed, it may be tough right after you run a bunch of 2 by 4s through a table saw to find some sleep. But, my point is, you may be lit limiting yourself if you ask, what kind of entertainment media do you suggest I consume to relax? Why do you always consume entertainment media to relax? You seem like the person who really likes to deconstruct the media content you consume. You use the words assimilate. So you're not the kind of person that just skims through one of the prereq books and gets a general idea. You probably pause, think about it, maybe even make notes while you're studying. All good things. But it may be a good idea to turn your train yourself to detach a bit. You know? You don't need to mentally finger fuck everything you see like an autist. Among other things, there are mental cycles you could be spending analyzing other things like, you know, for example, your actual interactions and experiences. For example... I finally got around to seeing Mad Max Fury Road, incredible movie. Regardless of the feminist themes or whatever everybody got mad at last summer in the red pill, it had the tightest, most concise narrative drive of a movie I'd seen in a long time. Compare that movie to the first Matrix, actually, which while is a solid movie, essentially didn't get past exposition until about 45 minutes in, and needed the whole Morpheus monologues about how shit went down to tie everything together. Mad Max essentially had zero dialogue committed to exposition, and yet everything that happened had more than enough context with respect to the narrative to make sense. The cam work on the action scenes incredibly tight. It was pretty much the opposite of the herky-jerky bullshits thing you see on any Michael Bay movie. Did it have messages about female empowerment and demonstrated men as disposable bodies, blah blah blah? Yeah, maybe. And I'm going to spend a lot of time mentally hand-wringing about the macro-society implications of the movie's popularity? No. In general, I think fictional media is actually going in the right direction. The most blue pill bullshit you ever saw on TV were things like Mad About You, Everybody Loves Raymond, King of Queens, all of which were off the air by the 2000s. Or recall the whole metrosexual trend. I know I need to live for me, but somebody needs to tell me how to do that. I can get into what I really think are effed up macro society problems for young men, such as zero tolerance bullying, which is nice in theory, but impossible to enforce. My point is that the stuff that's fucking up young men in the U S is way more than just Grey's anatomy episodes. So if you think you're somehow endorsing the blue pill agenda by watching curb your enthusiasm again, stop finger fucking everything into red pill, good blue pill, bad, and just enjoy entertainment for what it is. So on this, he's got a point. Um, there's a phase a lot of guys go through. I call it like the proselytization phase 
where after they've taken the pill and they understand male and female dynamics, the idea of any of their media not reflecting that mindset kind of bothers people. When you're watching a movie where a, like a rom-com, you're watching the rom-com and he's supplicating the girl and he wins her afterwards, put the stereo over his head. I get it. But you got to remember, and this is like Marshall McLuhan type stuff, the hot media and cold media. And this is kind of where Jack was going with the productive versus consumptive. Um, hot media is just meant to be seen. You just sit there, turn off your brain and like take it in. And that's what television is. That's what movies are. Cold media, on the other hand, requires you to think requires you to use your imagination. Radio, absolutely a cold media. Video games, cold media. And you kind of seen it now. So it's not so much about consumptive versus productive, but it's about how much agency you have and how much imagination you use on the things you consume. So if you're finding that passively consuming content is giving you a message you don't like, then yeah, you're being propagandized. Absolutely. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't really matter. Repetition is how people remember things and source amnesia takes care of the source. So if you're finding that I don't like watching reality TV because it's just a bunch of girls acting like blue-pilled cucks and a bunch of guys acting like Jack Murphy, why are you watching reality TV? There's a hundred years of old movies that are perfectly good if you just want to drown your brain out in positive masculine messages, which do you really need that kind of cheerleaded reinforcement? You're better off just doing something yourself. Go play a game. Go play with your kids. Go play Minecraft with your kids. That'll probably cheer you up. You're being productive, you know, simulated productivity. Yeah, there's hobbies you can do. Start writing. I, d I found this. Never been a big reader. I have probably written more books this year than I have read. Which, I don't know if that's a good thing, but it's a thing. So the two things you can take away from this, if you're finding that you can't consume media the same way you used to now, songs sound weird, country music sucks, movies are horrible, TV is ridiculous, stop watching so much hot media and start switching over to cold media. Start having things that require imagination. And that's why you're noticing a lot of guys. What are like the big things guys like right now? Video games, audio podcasts, construction, things you can work with your hands. These are all cold medias. All things that you have to put imagination, agency, decisions into. And you'll kind of notice that, yeah, you can either do this or you can sit here and bitch and moan because somewhere out there is not an alpha male making a new Rambo movie that attaches to your sensibilities.